And we'll look now at another redox titration. So this goes into the category of ammonium iron 2 sulfate and potassium permanganate titrations, potassium manganate 7 titrations. So the first of these two uh, types of titration, you would have used a standard solution of ammonium iron 2 sulfate. And you do need to know that name, a standard solution of ammonium iron 2 sulfate to work out the concentration of the oxidizing agent, uh, potassium permanganate or potassium manganate 7. And the subsequent experiment then, you'd use this standard solution of KMnO4, a solution whose concentration is accurately known, to work out the concentration of iron in a series of iron tablets. So if you're looking at uh, a certain setup here, you see you have your standard solution of KMnO4 always in your burette. Now you notice about this has got an intense purple color and because of the intense purple color, glassware often stains. And as well as that, instead of taking readings from the bottom of the meniscus, you take them from the top of the meniscus. So instead of taking them from the bottom of the meniscus, you take it from the top here. And as it's got a color, there's no indicator required. We see the color change here, since that's purple, it goes from colorless from our conical flask C for colourless, C for conical flask, if you like, to the first permanent pink tinge. That makes sense because you're adding in a purple solution. So obviously it's going to have some tinge of purple. So the first permanent pink tinge. Now, in the preparation of this iron 2 solution, we make it in this experiment from iron tablets. As we said in the last experiment, you use ammonium iron 2 sulfate. <coughs> in this experiment, we use iron 2 tablets. So in our iron tablets, you'd weigh them out on a weigh boat on an electronic balance. You'd crush them using a pestle and mortar. And in this preparation of crushing them, you add in some dilute sulfuric acid, dilute H2SO4. Now there's two reasons in this experiment for H2SO4 being added. The first one is to prevent early oxidation of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus by oxygen in the air. So if they ask you twice in the exam paper question, why did we add the sulfuric acid? And the first reason you always state this, to prevent early oxidation of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus by oxygen in the air. Remember oxidation is a loss of electrons or an increase in oxidation number, as we can see here. Then once we have that solution that would have been produced into a volumetric flask, poured into a beaker, and then transferred into the conical flask using a pipette, we add an additional dilute sulfuric acid, dilute H2SO4. Now the reason for this, the second reason for this, is to ensure complete reduction of Mn plus seven. Plus seven just means the oxidation state of manganese in KMnO4 to Mn2 plus. So to ensure complete reduction of Mn plus seven to Mn2 plus. Now we know if we haven't got complete reduction here, if we forgot to add in enough dilute sulfuric acid, because you'll get brown specks. And these brown specks are an intermediate state of Mn4+, plus, which is of manganese dioxide, MnO2. So our two reasons, prevent early oxidation of Fe2+, plus to Fe3+, plus by oxygen and air. And then the second reason, to ensure complete reduction. Remember, reduction is a gain of electrons. That's our definition in terms of electron transfer or decrease in oxidation number. Now you should know that if a, in a seal, a reduction in price means the price has got smaller, a reduction in oxidation number here. The numbers got smaller. Right, I think that's it. The calculations are difficult. It's been a while since iron tablets come up. In 2017, there was the ammonium iron 2 sulfate KMnO4 experiment. I think it was 2009 was the last iron tablet experiment. And I'll leave that one for you to do. I'll do 2003. So definitely, when you're studying these, look at your ammonium iron 2 and your KMnO4. And look at your iron tablet and KMnO4. Same with your bleach. Look at your iodine and sodium thiosulfate. And then look at your bleach solution, which makes up an iodine solution, and your sodium thiosulfate. Because a the theory of them is basically the same. And there's one wee thing I wrote down here. They often ask you why do you take iron tablets to prevent anemia 
and I'm caused by a lack of iron in the di- the, the diet. Um, there's another thing there they might ask you why why is there a capsule or a coating on the side of the tablets? That's so it's easier to digest, easier to stomach. So I skimmed through 2003. I extracted the information and this is what I've come up with. Now obviously it's not a first principles question this far back, but we'll make it a first principles question. So in this uh, one here, work with whatever one you know the big M of or whatever one you know the volume and the molarity. Here in our KMN04, we've got the volume and molarity. We're gonna work with this first of all. Now they would phrase it, never be put off by the way they phrase it. They'll ask you for the number of moles of KMNO4, which is potassium manganate 7. Just to remind you, it's known as potassium manganate 7 because if you're filling your oxidation numbers, and I do plan to put up videos on oxidation numbers, oxygen is minus 2, and there's 4 of them. K is an alkali metal, it's plus 1. So minus 8 plus 1 is that minus 7, and you want to get back to 0 because there's no charge on it. So Mn manganese has an oxidation state of plus 7. And they could well ask you to balance that equation at the start. And then get the ratio of 1 is to 5 for potassium manganese 7 to iron. <coughs> so back to this. The number of moles of KMnO4, once you see that big M, work with it. So 0.01M, automatically that means 0.01 moles per litre. Now how do you say this thing here? That wee backslash means in. And the way you say that in maths is divide by 0.01, right? Over a thousand. And how much volume have we got here? 13.9. So we mang that entire calculator there. 0.01 over a thousand divided by 13.9. 0. 0.000139 moles KMNO4 per. 13.9 centimeters cubed. And remember, if you get your scientific notation, all you've got to do, if you like that sort of format, which I do personally, I go shift, mode, eight for Norman, and then two. Um, and that'll get you into your decimal format there. The next thing then they'll ask you, we've got the number of moles of this. So we know in this equation, there's 0.000139 moles of this. To get the number of moles of iron, you're looking at the numbers at front, we see that's five times more in iron, so we simply multiply this answer by five. So the number of moles of Fe or Fe2 plus, so that answer there, multiply by five. And we get 0 0.000695 moles per 25 centimeters cubed. Now that volume is crucial because that'll allow us to work out the molarity. Then the next thing they'll ask you for the molarity or the concentration, they might even go to a concentration in grams per liter, but you must get the moles per liter first of all. Like I haven't looked at the question since from this information. Um, so how do we say this thing again in? We put it over 0 0.000695 over 25 times that by a thousand. And I get 0 0.0278. Now this is where it gets difficult and call a speed a speed. Every time I do this, I'll probably do it somewhat slightly differently. Um, but as long as I keep everything labeled, we should be able to work it out. So I'll keep this labeled. This is the concentration of our iron. Now this is one thing. If you read the question, it says in this, to analyze the iron content of commercially available iron tablets, a student uses four tablets and each of mass. Just be careful here. Sometimes they say of total mass. And if it says of total mass, you're gonna to have to go total mass divided by the number of tablets. But when it says each of mass, we're happy to take this. So just be aware of that maybe in 2009, I don't know. I might say total mass, in that case you go total mass divided by how many tablets there are and a wee stage further down. So, and another thing here to make up 250 centimeters cubed, because at the minute we're in liters, 
they're the two things you got to be aware of. Don't worry about your sulfuric acid. We explained the reasons why sulfuric acid is added. So this is the concentration of iron from four tablets, if you like, and moles per liter. Now from here, I'll do it differently each time. And actually, the first bit in that question it says the concentration of iron two. That would be that answer, but they will phrase it better in your first principles. Now, if I might work with, that's the concentration of iron from four tablets. If I wanted to work out the concentration of iron from one tablet, what would it be? So from four tablets gives me this, from one tablet then, I go back to one, so I just divide by four. So from here, as I say, I'll probably do it slightly different each time. Divide that by four, 0 0.00. .00 Six nine five. Big am still. So that's the concentration of iron from one tablet now. Okay, so that's the moles per liter. They do ask for mass now in the last two parts of this question. So I'm in the number of moles per liter. How do I go from moles to grams? So you just in uh, that part of the triangle where I'm multiplying. When you're leaving moles, you're multiplying. And the relative molecular mass of iron is 56. So that's, keep everything readable for yourself. Relative molecular mass of Fe, 0 0.3892 grams per liter. And that's the concentration of iron in one tablet again. But in this case, it's in grams per liter. Now you have two options up here. We could bring this up to a liter, but to me that gets messy. I would bring this here back to 250, so comparing like with like. So we've got the number of grams in a liter. A liter, remember, is 1,000 centimeters cubed. So to work out the number of grams in 250, I simply divide by four. If you like, I'll be getting a type for space here, so I'll bring it over here. 0 0.3892. How do we say this, this backslash, this in, put it over? thousand and we want it in 250 or we just divide by four and you get 0 0.0973 grams per 250 centimeters cubed and that is the concentration of iron in one tablet in 250 and you can see the importance of keeping everything labeled here because i myself will get confused half the time um, so it makes it a life a wee bit easier. Concentration of iron, one tablet and 250. Now we'll start comparing. And this is where the word, it says each of mass, 0.36. And we know we're right. If we got a number like this, 0.3892, and it's bigger than 0.36, how the hell would there be more iron in an iron tablet, which has a bigger mass of the tablet itself? You know. It has to be a smaller number than 0.36. So something will click in your head. You'd never be saying there's that much iron in an iron tablet, even though the mass of the ta tablet itself is 0.36. Crazy. So we'll put this now to work out. Well, they did ask the mass of iron in one tablet. Mass of iron in one tablet. There we go there. And the last bit, the percentage, they will always ask the percentage. So, like, I didn't need to look at the questions. I knew you'd work through the first principles and they'll ask you for the percentage of iron in each tablet. How much of the tablet's made up of iron? That's all that means. So, we have 0 0.0973 grams. The mass of each tablet is 0 0.36. And to make anything a percent times it by 100. So, this is where you've got to be careful. This is the word each, but if it was total, you would just divide the total by how many tablets there are. Divide that by 0.36, multiply by 100, and we get 27.027, which we record, let's press it, 27.03% of the tablet is higher. And that's it. Any questions, just be sure to ask. Quite a wee bit there. Hopefully that helps you.